Pokemon Gaming five part series. Uh, this is part three, building your team. If you haven't watched the other two parts and this is your first part, uh, the other two are pretty cool, I think. And if you don't want to watch them, that's no big deal. You could just start here. Um, I usually have a picture of my face on the PowerPoint, but this time I make full use of the screen, so I didn't want to cut any of the information off. So um, that's why you don't see me. If you don't know who I am or don't know if you can trust my knowledge, I have an introduction video. I will include the link in the description below. Feel free to go watch it and say hi. Uh, if not, that's cool too. Uh, let's just get started. All right, guys. So today, like I said, we're on part three, building your team. Last week, I think a week and a half ago, uh, we did understanding the metagame. So we took a look at the major threats and uh, what we're going to need to beat in our opponent's teams so that we can successfully build our own team. And um, yeah, I have links to the other two videos if you want to watch them. If not, we'll just keep going. So building your team. Now that we know what we have to beat, we can build ourselves a winning team. Pretty simple. No singular strategy is going to work 100% of the time. So that's really important to keep in mind with the team uh, because going into building it, we're going to need to give ourselves multiple options against different threats. So we're going to need lots of different ways of tackling certain situations or else we'll find ourselves getting countered, put into a corner, and then we're going to, you know, you're not going to be able to handle something that you need to handle. So flexibility in a team is key. So if there's one word I really want to put out there in team building, flexibility of the team is really what you're going to want. You're going to want a lot of options, switching, uh, you know, just a lot of ways to take care of any situation. Uh, also keep in mind that top cut in VGC is always best of three. So, you know, if your strategy is super obvious after playing the first time, you're going to have a hard time winning that second or third game. So you want a lot of flexibility so you can play the team in a number of ways and respond to what your opponent's going to do. So what to expect in this uh, PowerPoint? We're going to, one, build a team from scratch. And yes, while this looks a little sparse, sparse um, there's definitely a lot of information on this PowerPoint, so that's really all I had time to fit in here. So I'm going to talk about cores, uh, which we talked a little, about, uh, a little bit about last week, techs for the team, and then rounding out the team overall, making sure you know it's it's... It, it fits together well. I also want you guys to remember that this method is not the only way to build a team. It's just one way to build a team. So if you have your own way, don't, I mean like go, that's great too. There's tons of different ways to do it. That's what's so great about Pokemon. There's so many different ways to play the game. But this is a way that I like to build teams. So, you know, give it a shot if you want. So cores. Do you guys remember that slide from part two on typing cores from last week? looks a little bit like this. So we're going to go back to this in order to build our team and that's because cores have a really great um, switching. They have like good switching capability. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, we're going to pick actually one of those three triple cores and that's because triple cores are usually a lot stronger in their you know resistance yield and their flexibility. Um, so I took a look at these and I decided that I wanted to run the water fire grass core at least for this video. Uh, what is cool to know cores are built off of typings that have good switching potential with each other and like I said triple cores tend to cover their weaknesses a little bit better than dual cores so it's going to form a stronger basis for the team. So as far as water fire and grass go, uh, let's just take a look at the stats here. This is actually, this should help a lot in showing you what this core, you know what a, what a core really does. So we have Water, fire, or we have, yeah, water, fire, grass right here. So just take a look at those resistances and those super effects and notice that a lot of the, a lot of what one thing is weak to, at least one other typing covers it, if not both. Um, so a little, a couple things to mention though with the water, fire, grass core. We are weak to poison and rock since we have no resistances and they each sub super effect one of the three in our core. Another thing to note, you got a number of neutralities here. Normal hits us for neutral. Fighting hits us for neutral. Psychic hits us for neutral. Ghost Dragon Dark all hit us for neutral. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too because you really want to be taking you know, resisted hits. You want to switch into resisted hits, not neutral hits. So that's all good stuff to keep in mind. So here's our little chart about our disadvantages and our neutralities. 
So that's something to keep in mind while building a team. You really want to keep in mind what's your weak to, what you need to build against. So I know I want to do fire, water, grass, and I know this is what I'm weak to. Now the great thing about Pokemon is that a lot of Pokemon have dual typings, and dual typings can really help you shore up some of those weaknesses. So I got to go and have fun and pick a water, fire, and a grass Pokemon for this team. Uh, I started off by picking Rotom Wash for water. Uh, he is one of my favorite Pokemon in the game. He's bulky. He's got Will-O-Wisp. Um, also, he's water electric. And so with Levitate, that means he's immune to ground, which is, you know, um, that's great because we didn't want it. We were fires weak to it, so a little more coverage instead of being neutral. He's got that electric neutrality, which is big because, uh, you know, he's water type, so we get that neutrality. And he's got a flying resist now. Um, which we didn't have before. Now we also have Charizard. I picked Charizard um, with the intent to go Mega Charizard Y. That's because, you know, I wanted um, Drought actually to, to pair with Venusaur, which I'll talk about a little later. He's Fire Flying, which means he gets another immunity to ground, Fighting Resistance, and um, he's, you know, he weakens water with going, you know, into Drought Mode. Uh, However, unfortunately, he does become more weak to rock, which we were already at a disadvantage against with the basic core. And he's weak to electric, so we got to keep that in mind too. And then Venusaur here, I put Venusaur because mainly chlorophyll. Um, when Charizard goes mega, that gives us a, a fast option. Uh, I'll discuss that a little later, but that gives us something to hit really fast and hard right off the bat. Um, he's also grass and poison, which is really big because that gives us a fighting and a fairy resist, as well as a poison and bug neutrality instead of you know them super affecting Venusaur or instead of them super affecting our grass type it does give them a psychic weakness though and a ground neutrality but I did get two immunities to ground with Rotom Wash and Charizard so that's pretty good um, but that does mean psychic is going to be a little bit more of a pain so I picked these three because of that water fire grass core right and then I just looked at the um the dual typings of the Pokemon available here, and I found some combos that I like. I really like Charizard being there because he's got access to uh, Solar Beam in the sun, and that's good for covering water types. You know, and I got Venusaur for Chlorophyll. Rotom Wash is just a bulky support. So, you know, you go around, you pick three that you really like that follow this core, and then you just, just take a look at what they're weak to and, uh, you know, what you, what you think they're going to cover. So, uh, this is Maryland's uh, Team Weakness chart. Thing. I like using it because it tells you what Pokemon are weak to what and where your weaknesses and resistances are. I do want to note that sometimes it's buggy and it, it shows up weird, um, some of the stats, and also Fairy's not working. I definitely have two resists with Fairy right now in Charizard and Venusaur. So, um, like, it's not perfect, but it does help as long as you ignore the Fairy thing. Just don't, don't look at the Fairy thing. All right, good. So, uh, like I was saying... Just take a look at our weaknesses and resistances right now. I do want to note that Rock and Psychic are now our two disadvantages because they're we're both we're weak to each one, and the rest of the team just takes it neutrally. Um, our neutralities are still normal Poison, Ghost, Dragon, and Dark. But so far, for only three Pokemon, this is pretty good. Look at all those two resists, um, you know, in Steel, Fire, Water, and Grass, all that, and Fighting. That's good. You got some single resists up there too, and not a whole lot of weaknesses. I mean, about half of the field, like only half of the typings give us a, we're super affected by it. So that's pretty good. We do also have a fast option, like I said, in Chlorophyll. You always want some kind of fast option in case you see an opponent's team kind of just the whole thing's like mid-speed. You want to come out fast, hit them hard, and um, take the game like that way. Uh, you'll see an example of this actually later. I actually took a video of this team playing once, and the the... The being faster than the opponent's team completely won the game, and you'll you'll see why. So anyway, take a look at that disadvantages in the neutrality list. That's important. This is what we got so far. So now we got a need. We're gonna try to add some Pokemon onto this to to flesh out the team. So so far we have a decent amount of resistances without any overlapping weaknesses, um, which is that's pretty good because all the weaknesses were just one times. Not n none of the thing you know nothing was two times weakness. Like both two of the same Pokemon had or two different Pokemon had the same weakness. So that means we have a pretty good core. We have a solid core here. Uh, so we have one fast option in Chlorophyll and Drought. And we have one slow option for dealing with Trick Room, which is Sleep Powder on Venusaur. I know I'm not talking about the moves in this presentation, but Sleep Powder is pretty, pretty standard, I guess, on Venusaur just because Sleep is so OP. 
So, um, I know we don't have, like, a designated trick room slow mon to stop them or to, to fight against them, but Sleep Powder does help against stopping Trick Room. It's easily beaten. There's a lot of ways to just get out of it, like if they're a grass Trick Room center, but, like, you know, it's something to keep in mind. We do have at least something to, to try to stop Trick Room with so far. Uh, we also need to figure that there's a, all those popular VGC mons we talked about last week that we're going to need to look out for. Um, so right now I just compiled a short list. It's not complete, but... It is short, and uh, it, it just got some things off the top of my mind that I realized, okay, we're weak to this and this and this. So Garchomp, we don't really have a great way to deal with him yet. We don't hit him super effectively. He hits us neutrally at least for the whole team. Um, hard Trick Room, because we don't have a, like a designated slow option, something to stop that with. We don't have, <laughs> it's pretty specific, but a Fire type with Solar Beam kind of scares me. Um, because really Charizard is going to take that fire neutrally and that's it. The rest of the team is going to get super affected. And I know Charizard with Solar Beam one-shots a lot of Rotom. Um, so, you know, you got to be careful with that. Kangaskhan, that thing's a mega threat. Or mega Kangaskhan to be specific. That thing's a huge threat. It outspeeds the whole team and hits hard for neutral damage. Obviously, that's if we don't have Chlorophyll up. But still, like, you don't want to take that. That return is going to do massive damage to the whole team. And he's, and he's quite fast, so we need some kind of normal resist there. And still Psychic and Rock types. That's that's basically what we're looking at that we're afraid of right now. So I put on Tyranitar. What Tyranitar offers is a Psychic immunity, a slow option to help against Trick Room. He's also got Normal Poison, Ghost, Dark, and Fire resists. And he's, I was going to make him special, uh, special with um, Ice Beam to be Garchomp. So I took a look at this list. I realized, okay, what, what can I put on <clears throat> that's going to help against a number of these things? And I was like, okay, cool. So I just, I wanted to make sure that it covered uh, as many of those other points as possible. And, you know, he still had, he still can do other stuff as well. So making him special is a pretty, that was a pretty specific function for Tyranitar because I had to beat Garchomp. He became special because I knew I had to beat Garchomp. So decisions like that will happen with the Pokemon from now on as we realize what we're weak to. That's something to keep in mind. Like you're going to tailor the rest of the team to beating what you're weak to, and that's why it's important to go through this process to see what your team's weak to as you, as you're going. So I throw on Tyranitar and just take a look at that. All of a sudden, our only disadvantage becomes Rock, and our only neutrality is Dragon. Um, so Tyranitar brought a lot of resistances to the table. Look at that. He got that normal resist, Psychic Immunity, like I said. So a lot of good stuff here. Um, especially because he got another fire resist, and that way, hopefully, I mean, Solar Beam's still going to do a lot of damage. But, you know, we're doing our best. We are doing our level best. So, we, we went from a, a huge neutrality list to a very short one, and we cut our disadvantages in a half. And just by disadvantage, I know I didn't mention this, but it just means, like, we have more weaknesses than resistances. And, like, you know, we're, we're, taking, a, we're taking Rock neutrally from the whole team and one thing super effectively. So that's not any, you know, that's not a good situation to be in. Uh, to us, dragons are still pretty scary. They're really powerful, and we don't have any resistances. We're not helpless against it, though. We do have Ice Beam on Tyranitar, because, I, like I said, we're going to run them specially. And uh, Sleep Powder is great on Venusaur to help stop them if we're in Chlorophyll. And Neutral Poison is going to help. A little bit of Will-O-Wisp on Rotom if they're a physical dragon. But other than that, nobody here wants to take a Draco Meteor. So that's something we got to keep in mind. Dragons are still scary. Also, Rock has an advantage on us, although we do hit it super effectively with, like, Water Hydro Pump on Rotom and uh, Giga Drain on Venusaur. Those are just, you know, some standard stab moves. However, something like Tyrantrum is Dragon and Rock. Uh, it'll resist, or it'll hit, take both those neutrally. So Tyrantrum's almost like a team counter right now. So stuff like that you want to keep in mind. So let's look. After your first four, really the rest of the team are kind of techs. They're there to fill in the gaps against these specific threats or where we feel we're a tad weak. So as a, as a four-mon team, Charizard, Venusaur, Rotom Wash, and Tyranitar cover pretty much everything except for these four things here. Our disadvantage to Rock, our neutrality to Dragon, uh, the fact that Dragons can chunk us with um, some strong Draco Meteors, and that Rock still has an advantage. So these last two guys are going to work to try to, to try to get around these um, because 
that's what we're weak to. And if you know if our opponent does isn't running one of these, like if he if he doesn't have like any dragons, or if we're not afraid of his dragon, because I don't know, it's it's like slow or something, then we don't need to bring our techs. But if they do bring it, that's what that's when the techs get switched in, and that's when we use them um, to beat our opponent. So adding on, we're still afraid of dragons, uh, Garchomp and Tyrantrum especially. Rock moves, probably a little bit from Trick Room. We could use another kind of help for, uh, against Anti Trick Room, and we could also use another fast option because depending on Drought is never a good thing. You know, if they start Tyranitar and they make it the same turn we do, we're behind because Sun's not up. So that's that's kind of off at the top of my head stuff that we need to focus on. So I added in a Garchomp. Uh, he's Dragon, so he answers Tyrantrum, kind of. I mean, Dragon's super effect Dragon, so anytime you you are answering a Dragon with a Dragon, that's only kind of, it only kind of works because you never know what they're going to do. I did put on, at least while I'm building it, and um, I'll show you guys this next week, I put a Habenberry on Garchomp, and that's to make sure that he doesn't get as super affected by these Dragons because I know we're weak to Dragon. So I put on Haban to stop, you know, to, to make our Dragon matchup a little bit better. Uh, so he answers Tyrantrum, kind of. He answers Talonflame. He answers Charizard. I mean, those weren't the biggest threats to the team, but some stuff that he does, you know, those are some things that he does answer. He answers other Garchomp, kind of. I mean, Speed Tide, but with Habanberry, that should help us. Um, helps with dragons in general, since he is, like, the second fastest dragon in the game right now, um, outside of Noivern. He resists Rock. He can Earthquake Super Effect Rock. That's big. That's a big usage for Garchomp right there because we were weak to Rock and we're afraid of Dragons. So that's good stuff. And he's got an Electric Immunity, meaning he's he's relatively fast. He kind of gives us a fast option um, and that he can't get Thunder Waved by Meowstic, so he can't get, you know, or by anything else that Thunder Waved, so he can't get slowed down like that. So that's pretty good. I added him onto the team, and now all we're really left with is a disadvantage against Dragon, um, kind of, like I said, because we do have a couple options for it. We, we can tackle it in a number of ways. If it's physical, it gets will o -Wisp, slept, hit with neutral, you know, poison, Garchomp super affects it, Tyrantar super affects it. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but we do handle it pretty decently well. And um, watch as that resistance list goes up. I mean, four resist to fire, like, wow. And that weakness list we're trying to keep to a minimum. You'd never really want, you know, multiple of the same weaknesses. As best you can, you want to try to, you know, you want to kind of like spread that out and keep them, the numbers as low as possible. But, you know, two, one of those ground weaknesses is registered as Rotom Wash. Like I said, Maryland's thing's a little buggy. Rotom Wash has got Levitate, so it's immune to that. You know, otherwise it's like water, but we have Drought there. Grass, we have Charizard. I mean, he's putting up fire. That should be pretty decent for us. And, you know, Ice, and, you know, we're still running a, almost like a Sun team. So, so far, like, the team's looking pretty solid. Adding on, we're still afraid of Dragons a little bit. Rock moves a little bit because Garchomp by himself is not going to handle every Rock, you know, type situation. Still a little bit from Trick Room, and we could use another Fast option. Now, I know that's a lot to call upon, and no single Pokemon's really going to handle every single one of those perfectly especially solving Trick Room and being a fast option. So you really just you try to hold it up as best you can. So I put on a Mamoswine, and I decided this Mamoswine was going to be Choice Scarf to one, help feed dragons, and two, provide another fast option. Uh, he can't be slowed down by Thunder Wave, which is awesome for a fast option. You never want your fast option just, you know, Thunder Wave and then just becomes middle speed or, like, super slow. He beats dragons with his Icicle Spear and Icicle Crash. Uh, he's got an early flinch chance with Rock Slide. That's awesome. You can come out, Rock Slide, hope for the best. And also he's got uh, access to Thick Fat as his ability, which has like fire and ice moves. So it keeps him around for longer. So he's, he's decently, he's got some decent health on him. I mean, he's kind of still fluffy, but, you know, Thick Fat, it's not a bad ability. So I tossed him on, and um, he did give us another water and grass weakness. He's actually got a number of weaknesses here, but that's okay because we kind of had all of those. All of those are covered. I do know that we have no dragon resist still, um, banking on the fact that we can either outspeed and kill with Mamoswine, take the hit and kill back with Garchomp, or outspeed with Garchomp and kill, or, you know, kind of hit it with Tyranitar's Ice Beam, something like that. So we have options for dragon, but we don't have a resist to it. Um... So we do have more dragon weaknesses than resistances. That's not good. 
ever, but no team's perfect, and uh, the team could obviously use some tweaking. Teams always can use some tweaking. We do have more grass weaknesses than resistances, more water weaknesses than resistances, and more ice weak than resistances. Now, the thing about this is, though, we are running drought, so I'm, I'm kind of relying on drought a little bit to stop, you know, to help beat the grass, weaken the water, and beat the ice types. I'm not terrified against them. You know, we're not, we're not terrified against them, I guess. So, and, um, you know, grass, you're going to get outsped by a mammoth swine who's on a choice scarf and hopefully killed with some, you know, icicle spear or icicle crash. So, I mean, no team's perfect. And I think that's what my next slide gets to. So, yeah, we're, in, we're still a little rock weak, trick room weak, have no dragon resist. And our, our plan is to simply KO them before they can do a lot of damage. Um, and that's fine, too. And you'll see that work, actually, in um, a video I have up here. And uh, no team is perfect. you got to remember that. Your team's always going to be a little weak to something. What you want to do is you want to make a metagame call. This is why it's important to understand the metagame. Hint, hint, part two. Uh, and you want to tilt your weaknesses to things you don't think you're going to get paired up against in a tournament. So no team's going to cover everything perfectly. Pick and choose what you think you're probably going to run into. And then, you know, tailor your weaknesses towards the things you're, like, probably not going to see. And that way, you know, you have the best chance of, you know, going far, or making top cut and winning. Uh, tweaking the core, your techs, your EVs, and moves can all potentially help against certain matchups. I didn't include the EV spreads and the moves in this video. I wanted to save that for next week's video, which is uh, playing the team. Because a lot of the move sets and EVs get changed around as you play against other teams. And um, I didn't want to make this video disgustingly long. So... Those will be covered next week. I did talk a little bit about some basic moves I can expect on my Pokemon this week, such as Sleep Powder and Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb on Venusaur, you know, like Heat Wave, will o -Wisp, Thunder, you know, Thunderbolt and Hydro Pump on Rotom Wash. Those are just some really standard moves that you're almost always going to have them on those Pokemon because, you know, they're stab and um, they cover each other pretty well. But other than that, I didn't want to go into the specifics just yet because they will get tweaked as we play. Um, also, you want to keep working on a team, make it comfortable, and make it your own. Being, com being comfortable with a team is one of the most important factors in playing a team well. You want to know how it plays. Even if it's a little weak to something, don't scrap it just because you know you ran into something that beats you. You can always go back in, change the EVs, change the moves, change the techs, you know, switch out the Pokemon, and that can, that can really make your matchups a lot more favorable. Um, like I said, I couldn't help it. I threw the team into a simulator. I wanted to play the team, and um, I, I'm not gonna like straight up commentate through it because I don't want to ruin anything for next week. I also didn't go and like you know edit moves as as you know battles went on. I just wanted to play it once. Actually, I played it five times. Uh, the team's actually really strong. It won all five times, so that's pretty cool. But I wanted to show you at least one battle in action uh, about the team that we just built here. Uh, I do want to note that. Our fast option, we were faster. This guy was kind of trick room-ish. And the fact that we were way faster than him, well, we were able to KO his whole team before he really got a chance to do anything. Notice just by being faster, we're able to take out that Rotom Heat before he even gets a chance to kill either Special CJ or Not Mega. So that speed there is really important. Um, he did have a Grass Trick Room Setter, which benefited us since we had Sun Boosted Heat Wave. Uh, the rest of this is pretty... I mean, just there was nothing he could do because of how strong... And how fast this, I mean, we just outsped him and like the, the, the team just had, it had such good, we, or you know, coverage on its weaknesses and stuff. I'm always threatening something out here if you notice that. Um, we're going to make a good switch. You'll see the fourth soon. 
I, I brought Tyranitar as well because I did see his Trick Room, and you'll see that this is why we brought Tyranitar at all. He was a you know help against Trick Room option, but just just being here and outspeeding really caused a lot of damage and um, some good switches. We don't even lose a Pokemon actually because just just the the the, the typings on the team are so good. Like look at all these resisted hits, good protects, super effects. Like it's just that's how you know your team's doing pretty well. Like, it, it's built pretty well because you can switch in all the time and you're not, you know, any forfeits. So, yeah, that was just the team in action. Uh, we'll be covering a lot about that next week and um, going in, doing the move sets, doing the EV spreads. But I wanted to show you at least one battle. I couldn't help myself. And that's that's the end of part three, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I really, today, I really just wanted to cover what it's like to go about building a team. So I chose a core. You know, I picked the Pokemon, I saw what they were weak to, and then I just picked, you know, text on top of that to start rounding it out. Uh, and that's pretty much how I go about starting building a team. Obviously, a lot of editing goes into the team as you play, and it will it should always be edited as you play. There's never a complete team because the metagame shifts. You're always going to be wanting to switch around your EVs kind of thing and switching around your movesets. But um, this, is a, this is like a great way to start building a solid team that you can just go and you can work into and really, you know, really make it your own. So next time, part four, playing the team. Now that we finally have a team down on paper, we can go uh, and explain some move and item choices, as well as what to do in team preview and how to play against your opponent. Choosing well in team preview, won that last game. That's how important team preview is. Uh, also, item choices and move choices can help you against your weaker matchups. That's really important. And that's going to be, as you play the team, you're going to find out what you're weak against. And that's that's when you're going to start making your move and your item choices, you know, more solid. So I wanted to put that in next week's video. Also, a lot of it is going to be straight up gameplay battles. So we're going to be battling, seeing what's wrong, seeing what's right, fixing things if, if things need to be fixed. So uh, get ready for some battles. And, you know, guys, thanks for watching as always. It's awesome that you guys watch. I put a lot of time into this and it makes it special that you guys actually care. And yeah, so I hope you guys have a great weekend, even though it's Wednesday. Never too early. Hump day, guys. It's never too early to celebrate the weekend. And yeah, thanks for watching again.